Hello and welcome to World Inside. I'm Tian Wei in Beijing. The U.S. is weighing new tariffs on 3.1 billion of exports from France, Germany, Spain, and the U.K. In another step, that's likely to exacerbate transatlantic tensions. The move is related to Europe and the U.S. long-standing World Trade Organization aircraft subsidy fight. Meanwhile, the EU is continuing to push for a global digital tax on technology companies such as Google, Facebook, and Amazon. Despite the U.S. pulling out of the negotiation last week, so why have both sides ignited more uncertainties on top of the already suffering COVID-19 crisis? Earlier, I sat down with experts in the field. Let's hear their views. For more discussion in Boston, the United States, we are joined by Robert Siciliano, co-founder of Protect Now. In Beijing, we have Chu Chang, the assistant director from the International Monetary Institute at Renmin University of China. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Let me begin by asking you, Mr. Siciliano, what do you make of this prolonged battle between Washington and Brussels uh, in terms of having taxes on new tech companies? from the U.S.? So certainly um, the Trump administration has been uh, forcing the hand of uh, every country in the world that uh, is in some way, shape, or form either dependent or in some type of trade or agreement with the U.S. And uh, is, is, as long as uh, uh, Donald Trump is the president, uh, he is not going to stop until he gets what he wants. And that's just the way he is. Mm. Mr. Chu, Professor, tell me more about your understanding of this uh, fight over taxation on high-tech companies. This kind of uh, going back and forth has been going around for like in the past 20 years. That is because the productivity all over the world has been uh, slowing down, which means we cannot make the cake bigger. But since we're still having a bigger budget and deficit to pay, and then I think everybody's trying for a bigger cake of their own. Uh, so we're seeing that uh, American is posing uh, huge tariffs on uh, European, uh, Europe-based banks like the Deutsche Bank, like the HSBC, you know, the English banks and also the German banks. Mm -hmm. Huge, huge tariffs and the sanctions on them and, uh, you know, the fines on them. But on the other hand, back to the Europe, they also put uh, very um, heavy taxes on the tech, uh, tech, uh, tech giants and the digital giants. Uh, Europe doesn't have a tech giants like the Facebook or Twitter to help them, you know, to control the global market and have a dominant position in the global market. So that can be easily the target. And also, this is a very good way to balance the what we call the pay checkbook. It's like uh, you find my boy, and then I will just put some sanction and find on your boys. It's like that. Well, on the other hand, Professor Xu, as you may know, some of those companies could be registered in, let's just say, a very exotic place, as we know that, is off offshore, as they say, registering, uh, registering and then uh, they could escape uh, taxes on both sides, whether it's in Europe or in the United States, meaning whether where the company was originally from headquarters in and also uh, in the market uh, where they are operating. So that's the argument coming from Europe. You have to understand this kind of attack is more like a fan, uh, more like a fine. So basically, well, your point is correct. A lot of this uh, uh, tech giants are registered in the tax haven like Cayman Island or mm. Virgin Islands. Well, that's for sure. Uh, you cannot tax them, especially their their mother company or financial holding company, that's for sure. But don't forget one of the fact that if you want to operate in Europe, you have to register a company in Europe. That's a law. Well, every country has a certain law if you want to operate, even though you're a multinational, but if you want to operate in China, you have to register in China. If you want to uh, operate in America, you have to register one of your company in America. And as long as there's an operation going on and there, mm -hmm. as long as there are uh, uh, financial incomes going on and there, there is always a point you can kick in on and put a fine on it or a tax on it as long as you want to call it. But, you know, this is likely to be a debate that will be continuing. However, Mr. Siciliano, as you may know, uh, this is likely also to change how tech companies are operating all over the world. Uh, as we see the world is ever more divided, this kind of debate is not 
going to go nowhere, but rather likely to see more enforcement about the tax, for example. So what does that mean for the tech companies worldwide? Are they going to, uh, you know, once again, take a look again at their operating, uh, you know, systems and also at their, you know, their business models and how will that work? Companies like Google and Facebook uh, are required or, or you, know, you know, branch out uh, overseas. Uh, they, they, they face um, you know, multiple uh, regulations, you know, throughout uh, the U.S. and uh, worldwide. Uh, and each country has their own uh, set of standards and, and, and how uh, these companies uh, operate, the amount of uh, information that they're allowed to communicate with their end users. Uh, whatever uh, privacy or security settings uh, in the U.S. may or may not be uh, EDPR and so forth. Uh, it, it, that, that being said, uh, ultimately, the Trump administration wants to bring jobs back to the U.S. Hmm. And uh, uh, he's already, um, you know, canceling uh, visas for uh, anyone coming to the U.S. Uh, during COVID. And I think he'll stop at nothing to... Uh, prevent a lot of these companies from you know, continuing to flourish overseas at uh, uh, you know, le less expensive labor rates mm. and to essentially uh, bring those jobs back to the U.S. Mm. But it's hard to imagine that the tech companies are headquartered in the U.S. would uh, withdraw from the European market, wouldn't it? Yeah, I don't see that happening either. Uh, you know, Google will fight that tooth and nail, but at the same time, they're going to do what's necessary to appease the current administration. Companies like uh, Apple uh, setting up manufacturing in the U.S. is, for many say, it's just not cost effective for them. Mm. However, uh, they're being taxed to a certain point where it they have to, again, in order to appease the uh, current administration. If the if the administration changes come November, then it, you're likely to see uh, the way business is conducted will be changed as well. Mm. How much do you think, uh, Professor Chu, uh, the difference of tax would mean for high-tech companies from the U.S. and European markets? Much or marginal? Well, they're going to start from the marginal and then see how the things are going. And uh, this is not the first time, as I, as I mentioned. And eventually, well, they're going to have a lot of process going back and forth. And uh, mm. one government to file a tax on the other side or the fine on the other side. And then there's a appeal process to the administration and going to the court. And mm -hmm. eventually, well, the fine will be put into places. Just look at the history. Well, there's always billions of dollars getting involved. Just to put a look at the fine uh, put on the HSBC and the Deutsche Bank. They're like huge taxes, but uh, that's just not the end of the story. And uh, on the, well, vice versa, you know, the European companies uh, get fined by the U.S. government, and you will always say the European government would do the same to the U.S. companies. Well, it's like, you know, uh, free quote, uh, the, uh, sorry, uh, the name of the Latin name is like uh, uh, quid pro quo. Yes, quid pro quo is like, always like that. Uh, but I, I'm saying that the, the companies is always like the victims. They're not the culprit of everything, but they're always the victims of this, uh, you know, battles between the government. But the other thing that's very interesting is, um, you know, about uh, how uh, tech companies these days are functioning uh, with politics. Uh, for example, Mr. Siciliano, in the United States, you saw Twitter uh, several weeks ago have already acted upon some politicians' comments uh, on their platform, uh, the President of the United States included. Now, recently, over the weekend, Facebook has also started its own approach after many of its key advertisers from global companies have threatened or have already withdrawn uh, or uh, paused their advertisement on Facebook. So, Mr. Siciliano, what do you make of uh, this round of politics vis-a-vis -vis, uh, high-tech companies' approach in the market? Yeah, it's um, about time that uh, these tech companies stepped in. And, you know, obviously, uh, you know, we, 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 we speak to the Constitution and free speech. Uh, but that said, you know, hate speech, 
uh, affects people's lives uh, in, in an extremely negative way. Uh, promotion, promoting violence is never okay. And, um, uh, you know, if, 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 the, the, if the Republicans aren't going to police their own people that, and, and we're going to leave it to tech companies to do it, then at least somebody's doing it. Uh, somebody's got to be the apparent in the room. Uh -huh. And if the tech companies are going to step up and they are going to censor the president, then so be it. Uh, it, it if, if the president is going to speak to violence and promote violence, then he should be censured. Mm. On the other hand, it's kind of tricky, isn't it? What should be considered as content to be censored, particularly regarding politics? What should not in a system like the United States, which uh, believes uh, in its own version of democracy? So it's kind of a tricky question. How do you see this uh, societal debate that is already taking place, uh, Mr. Siciliano? You know, there's a saying that um, if, it, if, it, if it looks like a duck and it sounds like a duck and it quacks like a duck, <laughs> then it's probably a duck. And, 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 and we know that hate speech mm. and the promotion of violence leads to violence. Mm. So in, there, there's no room for that in a civil society. So when, 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 when the president of the United States is speaking out and could potentially cause harm, uh, such as uh, recommending that people inject disinfectant into their body, and people actually do it, then uh, somebody's got to step in and again be the adult in the room. Mm. Under these circumstances, how do global high-tech companies operate? I mean, this is uh, the pressure, of course, now for the first top tier of high-tech companies like Google, like uh, Facebook, like Twitter, uh, but likely it's also uh, going to extend to the other um, platforms, social platforms. They're, they're going to need to, I, I think, step it up even further uh, with uh, everything that's happening in the U.S. right now and the amount of chaos and disinformation and misinformation leading up to the election and manipulations of the election and millions of bots being deployed uh, throughout Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn designed to uh, in, infect and inflate the conversation. Mm. Uh, Disinformation is it, 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 an extremely uh, difficult enemy to fight. And if uh, these tech companies want to uh, maintain civility within, in proper elections, then they need to step it up. Mm. You also see the politics, uh, Mr. Xu, uh, regarding the revenues of the tech companies. What does that mean for high tech companies? Now, they have been debating and arguing their role only as a platform, not like a media organization, but now it seems that everybody is pointing to them and say, you better be responsible for the content that are on your platform. Tech companies that right now become real target. Why? Because since we have the COVID-19, well, even before the COVID-19 outbreak, mm. for a very long time, tech companies have been the only winners in the world market. As I mentioned, the traditional productivity has stopped growing. The only thing that grows is the tech and digital industry because they don't have a marginal cost. It's like you make a copy of the software or app and uh, you cost that probably cost you $100,000. And even if you make one billionth of the copies, you don't have an extra cost. So the marginal cost is getting lower and lower even to zero. If you look at the what we call the high-tech indexes in the U.S. market, you will find out the high-tech index is only one growing across the period, mm -hmm. especially during the COVID-19 period of time when the Dow Jones index is basically flat, flattened, but the Nasdaq is still going on, especially the FANG companies like the Facebook, Google, mm -hmm. Alphabet, or something like that. So they're the only winner. So they become the target of the public opinion and the politics. People are thinking the Mark Zuckerberg is earning too much. Jack Ma is earning too much. While a lot of the majority, mass majority of people are left in the uh, what we call the shitholes of the economy. Their life is not getting better. But only the digital giants and the rich people. But, but Mr. Chu, so uh, people, Mr. Chu, uh, Professor, you sound like... People are taking a revenge against high-tech companies by asking them to be yes. responsible for the content on their platform. 
Yes, yes, because they cannot criticize the free market because the the reach and distribution of the wealth are the result of the free market. That's like the orthodoxical things and the doctrines. They cannot just offend easily, so they have to find another reasonable reason. Like you have、wow. to be responsible for the content, and so we won't put the advertisement on those.、Uh, Facebook or the the Google advertisement or something. It's just showing a stance of yourself. I'm I'm not sure whether Mr. Siciliano really agree with that. There seems to be a conspiracy theory, according to Professor Chu.、Uh, do you agree? You know, you know I, I'm not sure if the professor and I are, are far off. You know, in 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 the end,、um, you know, there 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 needs to be.、Uh, Some general regulation of what's okay and what's not okay、mm. to say.、Uh, you know, certainly, you know, ultimately, what's most important is the truth.、Uh, and then, when the truth is bent in a way that uh, affects uh, the quality of people's lives、uh, in, in such a way that、uh, can do them harm,、uh, then that speech needs to be either regulated or essentially denied.、Mm. And I think we're seeing, you know.、Um, Uh, an uprising, uh, uh, you know, w- with all the protests and, and the riots,、uh, as a result of people being oppressed for 400 years.、Uh, and just today,、uh, the president had、uh, retweeted a video of,、uh, of of a white American screaming "White Power," and and none of that is okay, and that is an embarrassment to anyone who is an American. Now, his administration made him take that down, in、uh, other circumstances. If a social media、uh, platform takes it down,、uh, there shouldn't be anything wrong with that. Another thing I want to have your both of your opinions on is about where it is heading for. Now we see this uh, uh, wonderful opportunity, in fact, for high-tech companies worldwide. At a time when we are facing crisis, people are quarantined at home; they need to work at home, and online shopping and online information, social media、uh, discussions are becoming extremely crucial. So, how do you see, on the one hand, that these companies need to do some、uh, their own house cleaning? On the other hand, The gigantic, gigantic business opportunities facing every one of them,、uh, Mr. Siciliano. So the、um, U.S. obviously, like many other countries, is going to take a big hit in the commercial real estate sector.、Uh, many, many people are going to be working from home for the foreseeable future, and what's happening is the attack surface、uh, has greatly increased, which means that there are so many more devices.、Uh, for, Be the work at home devices that criminals can go after, and that is already becoming a problem. Uh, uh, Professor Chu, what's your thought? Well, I think this is a major game changer.、Uh, the COVID-19 is going to change our lifestyle for good.、Uh, me and myself are feeling it. I'm changing myself too. But、well, do remember, we in 2003 we have a SARS pandemic, right, in China, and、uh, it, well, this is a little bit of story. In 2003, now we have a SARS pandemic in China, and a lot of cities have been locking down. Like currently, not in that kind of scale, but also similar situation.、Mm. And at that time, there was a company surviving, trying to keep their head above the water, and that company called Alibaba. And at that time, Alibaba company is a very small startup. It's trying to promote something we call online shopping, and a lot of people are saying that is just a hoax. That is just something we don't understand. Who is going to shop some?、Uh, Buy some food online. That's ridiculous. And who is going to buy buy clothes online? You you cannot even try it on.、Mm. This is never going to work. But 2003, SARS pandemic did them a favor. Did them a great favor. A lot of people trying to stay at home and do shopping. They have to. They're forced to do so. And since at that time, the e shopping, the online shopping,、mm. accounted for only 0.1 percent of the retailing business in China. And then boom, they become like 8 percent of the retailing. Business in China, and right now is、uh, closing to 20% percent、mm. in this business. So everybody is getting so close to online shopping, online ordering, and、uh, you know everything you bought online has become a lifestyle.、Mm-hmm. And just take that as an as example, and let's just viewing into the future. You are going to see a lot of things going to be changed. Le- let me ask you one final question、um, regarding the data security. Now, Mr. Siciliano, you mentioned briefly earlier in your answer, but still. 
You know, one of the debate between Europe and the United States, particularly since both of them have similar uh, political systems, is about the data security. Yeah, and you know, and over the next um, uh, five to ten years, uh, you're 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 going to see uh, that there's going to be a, um, uh, a, a a glut of information that is going to um, end up in uh, you know. It, it, it's going to be dispersed throughout throughout the globe. But what about Europe and the U.S.? Uh, both are allies, are supposed to be at least since the World War II. As much as uh, Europe is allies with the U.S., uh, there have been uh, tensions for almost four years now that uh, we have not seen in decades. And uh, you know, right now the uh, EU is banning um, uh, United States. Uh, uh, Americans from flying to the EU because of COVID. Uh, so, you know, relations are souring as a result of not just COVID, but uh, how this administration is treating uh, the globe uh, and everybody in it. And so uh, things are changing rapidly. But for now, thank you so much for sharing with us your thoughts. Uh, Chi Chiang, Robert Siciliano, all the best. Be well. Thank you.